acquainted with grief. In, in the final scenes of his life, when we saw him, there was no beauty in him that we should desire him. We considered him stricken and afflicted by God. If God told you you will never be rich, will you still follow him? Will you still pray the way you pray? If you pray. Will you still tight? If you tight. I told us the first day that the frame of reference is very important. Because many of you think that anything you do for God in time, you must get the reward in time. Jesus is a perfect example that that's not how it works. The man kept suffering and suffering and suffering and suffering. The person that was his foster father, obviously Joseph didn't live long. That was still the kind of man Jesus chose. So early in life, the responsibility of caring for the family had fallen upon Jesus' laps. After Jesus was 12 years of age, you will never hear of Joseph anymore in scripture because he was no more in the picture. So apparently the man had died. Your mom and your brothers, they are looking for you. Who is my mom? Who is my brother? Who are my brethren? Joseph was no more in the equation. That was why at some point they said, uh -uh, is this not the carpenter? Oh, surely Joseph was dead. Otherwise, why would Jesus hand Mary over to a disciple when he was about to die? When he was on the cross and he said, woman, behold your son. And he said to John, the beloved, behold your mother. And the Bible said from that moment, that disciple took her onto his own home. If her husband was alive, will another young man carry her? No. But, so obviously Joseph was dead and the family of Jesus, because Jesus was the firstborn of Mary, the responsibility of that family was hers, was his, was Jesus's. So when Jesus was about to die, he had to hand his mom over into the care of one of the disciples to say I won't be around anymore to take care of my mom I'm handing her over to you and he talks to us a lot about body language and about body life because Jesus had half brothers the other children of, of Mary were there why didn't Jesus hand their mom to one of his younger brothers you know why because at that time, they were unbelievers. Mary was a believer in her son. Her other children did not believe their older brother. You don't know what God has done for you if your family members believe in your call. The Bible tells us in John chapter 7, neither did his own brethren believe in him. So they were mocking him. Why are you still here in Galilee? Nobody does this thing if he wants to be known and he does this thing in secret. If you do these things, go and show yourself in Jerusalem. And the commentary is, for neither did his own brethren believe him. The brothers of Jesus, the brethren of Jesus, they came to faith when they saw their brother rise from the dead. It was the resurrection of Jesus that was the last straw that broke the camel's back. Even when Judas, even when Lazarus was raised from the dead, they were still obstinate. So by the time Jesus was going to heaven, it was the fact that the connection between his disciple and Mary was stronger in that sense. And I want to say to you by, in passing that what binds us together in Jesus is stronger than any other blood. Huh? Yes. What binds us together in Christ Jesus is stronger than any other blood. If you are a believer and I am a believer, this, this, uh, this relationship is the most permanent relationship that there will ever be. If you have family members that are not born again, it's a temporary arrangement. That, that entire relationship will come to a permanent end when either of you dies. But what we share in Christ Jesus, it transcends time. So you have a double bond with members of your family who are born again like you are born again. It means that apart from the biological thing that we share by biological blood, we also stand together in the fellowship of the blood of Jesus. If that blood of Jesus is not there, 
every other bond you have is not strong enough. It will end in time. But you know, there are many of us, many of us, we do not descend the body of Christ like that. That's why we still do, we still do tribalism inside church. Because we do not understand the power and the import of the blood of Jesus that binds us together. So Jesus was the one who took the responsibility of the home till the day he died. He was still caring for his mom. Because obviously, his dad, his foster father, his legal father, Joseph, was no more alive. And because Joseph was no more alive, Jesus immediately, quickly, had grown from the carpenter's son to the carpenter. And I need you to know that those were the choices Jesus made for himself by himself. They were not imposed on him. He made himself. And look at what he made. Many of you do not realize that the way up is down. Many of you don't realize that God plays the eternal game. God does not play the time game. No labor in the Lord will go unrewarded. But the reward will not necessarily come in time. And the trouble is that many Christians are not willing to wait. So they want to um, twist God or they want to orchestrate their own reward for themselves by themselves in time. So, uh, so you mean we we'll just serve God, serve God, serve God, serve God like that for nothing? Why are they calling it nothing? Because they are not looking past time into eternity. And when you look at Jesus, you will see that Jesus Christ played that long game because all the way till the end of his life, huh? Jesus did not blow. Like many of you want to blow. He didn't blow. What that means is that God does not owe you blowing. It doesn't mean that you will not blow. It just means that God doesn't owe you. It means that it may or it may not. It will be fine. Because if it was fine for Jesus, it cannot be wrong for you. Oh, you don't understand. <laughs> you, you see, many of you are agitated. You say, oh boy, I suffer or I suffer before I come no God like this. They still won't make I suffer join. Listen to me. The songwriter says, through many dangers, toils, and snares. Many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. It is grace that brought me safe this far. And grace will lead me home. I need you to know that whatever cross God calls you to bear, God gives you grace to bear it. The trouble with this kind of preaching is that many of you, you will not like it. And the trouble with not liking it is that it does not change anything. Huh? If you are going to suffer, my saying that you are going to suffer is not what will make you suffer. Huh? And if you are going to suffer, even if we tell you, you will not suffer! We are only setting you up for disappointment because you will suffer. In fact, it is better for you to prepare for suffering and end up not suffering. But the assurance we have in scripture is that anyone that follows Christ Jesus will surely suffer persecution. It's there. Jesus said in this world, and we are still in that one. You know that word that he said, this world, is <laughs> still is this one. We are still in it. He said in this 